Harvey, not only is she a coach, but she's also a student. She's also my best friend. She's also my wife. <laughs> uh, next is Coach Greg. You might have saw Greg outside. Greg, can you raise your hand? Uh, this is Coach Greg. Not only is he a coach, but he is a student. Greg and I have been working together for over 30 years. Uh, Greg has been my right-hand man my entire entrepreneurial life. Uh, he's a very smart guy, very loyal, very funny, what a good joke, Dr. Uh, Greg. And then last, Coach Nicholas. Nicholas, can you raise your hand? Not only is he a coach, but he is also a student. He's a very smart guy. He's a, got a background in computer engineering. He's an app developer, and he's also my son. And again, I'm Coach Nick, and I'm also a student. Everything I'm going to talk about tonight, we do, we're students, we're believers in. Okay, so before I get too much into the presentation, I want to take just a few minutes to properly introduce myself and kind of tell you my story and how I got here tonight. Uh, I was born here in California in the Los Angeles area. I lived in the LA area until I was nine years old. And I remember my mom coming up to me when I was nine. She said, son, guess what? We're moving to Colorado, out onto a horse ranch, out in the country. And I was a little surprised, a little excited. So I went from the big city of LA out into the country on this horse ranch. So I spent the second half of my childhood helping my mom take care of her horses and cleaning the stalls and shoveling horse manure, and then you've never done that before. So my parents instilled a very hard work ethic in me at a very young age. So fast forward, I turned 18, graduated from high school in Colorado. I decided I wanted to move back to California to go to college and see what my career path was going to be. And at that time, I was really interested in the stock market. So at the time, I was thinking, well, I think a, being a stockbroker is the career path I'm going to take. So I was studying for my Series 7 license at the time, going to college. And then a year later, 1987, I was spending the day with my father. It happened to be a Monday. Don't say it out loud if you know the day. This particular Monday was one of the biggest stock market crashes in the history of the stock market. By a show of hands, how many of you know the nickname of that particular day? Anybody know the nickname? What was it? No, I think so. Somebody said over here. Black Monday. Exactly. Black Monday. In 1987, I was with my father on Black Monday. He had quite a bit of money in the stock market at this time. I had a little bit. I was only 19 years old at the time. And I was observing my father. He was very emotional very traumatized. My father on Black Monday ended up panic selling all of his stocks. He sold everything. I'm 19, I'm watching, I'm observing his emotions. And I remember I was learning to get my Series 7, I was learning about the stock market, and I always thought, why aren't you supposed to buy low and sell high? Wouldn't this be a good time to get some great stocks at a discount? Easier said than done. Easier said than done. <laughs> so I'm watching. I didn't do anything with my stocks. Didn't have a lot because I was a young guy at the time. I remember later that day I was watching the news. You know, we all watch the news, and generally it's bad news. And on this particular day, they had people in New York City jumping out of windows. And so after a few weeks of observing all of this activity, I decided I no longer wanted to be a stock. I didn't want my clients jumping out of windows, so I pivoted. I decided to take a different career path and become an entrepreneur. And I've been a business owner the last 30 years. But what I learned at that time in 1987 was, one, watching my father and what he experienced. And then also I decided as I run my business, as I make extra money, I learned so much about the stock market but I decided to do some investing and trading on the side as I made extra money with my business. So as the years progressed, 
when I became an investor in the stock market, I started noticing patterns. And you've probably seen these patterns yourself. I was investing in the blue chip stocks, the best of the best. But I would notice whenever there was some bad news in the world or in the economy, maybe it's a war, maybe it's inflation, maybe it's interest rates, I would notice that these blue chip stocks would dip. For example, Microsoft. This is a stock that I bought and sold a lot. Whenever Microsoft, the stock would dip because there's some bad news, it would always recover when the bad news wasn't so bad anymore. And I started noticing this year after year. So I thought to myself, I said, wouldn't it be smarter to be cash heavy, wait for those dips, and then when it recovers, you flip it. So I started doing this in the stock market about 30 years ago. Each year that went by, I started to fine tune this trading system that I created. In fact, I fine tuned it so well that I made money on every trade. I never lost money. The only problem with the stock market is I would only do about four trades a month. If you've been in the stock market before, you know it's not that volatile. It's you know, kind of like this. But it was very consistent. It wasn't life-changing money I was making, but it was great extra money. So fast forward to the year 2012. I was watching a TV show hosted by a gentleman by the name of John Stossel. How many of you heard of John Stossel? You okay? John Stossel used to be the co-host with Barbara Walters on a TV show called 2020. But in 2012, he had his own show. And I was watching one day, he had a segment about Bitcoin. He was talking about Bitcoin, why it was invented, how it's being used, the concept behind it. And I thought the show was very interesting. After the show, I decided to dig a little deeper and learn about, more about Bitcoin. A year later, John Stossel did another show about Bitcoin, how it evolved over that year. And the more I learned about Bitcoin, the more fascinating it was, the more intriguing, the more it made sense to me. So I kept digging a little deeper. So finally in 2015, I said, okay, I've got to take that next step. And that next step was to open a, an account with Coinbase. How many of you heard of Coinbase? Oh, sorry. Okay. Coinbase is the largest, most reputable crypto exchange in the United States. It's a publicly traded company. So in 2015, I said, okay, I'm going to open a Coinbase account. I've got, I got to learn more about this crypto digital asset world. So what I discovered when I opened my Coinbase account is that there's other cryptos besides Bitcoin. Another thing I discovered is that crypto trades in a very similar way that stocks trade. There's a bid and an ask. You can do a market order. You can do a limit order. But the best thing that I discovered when I opened my Coinbase account was the volatility of crypto. This is the stock market. This is crypto. It's a giant roller coaster. For over 20 years, I was always wishing that stocks would be more volatile so I would have more trades. Because every trade is profitable for me. So now I learned about Bitcoin, got into Coinbase. I decided to adapt my stock trading system to crypto. It absolutely changed my life. I have been retired since 2015, thanks to what you're going to be learning tonight. Fast forward to 2021. I was spending the day with a friend of mine, his name is Michael. We've known each other for a very long time. And we both share a hobby in mountain biking. And I have miles of mountain biking trails in my home. He has the same at his home here in Spankula. I was at his house one day and we just finished mountain biking. And my phone starts pinging and getting these notifications. And my friend Michael said, well, what's going on with your phone? And I said, I'm getting these trade alerts from Coinbase. He says, oh, you're into crypto. I said, yeah, I've been in it for a long time. And he said, well, you know, I've always wanted to learn about crypto. I know this 17-year-old kid that became a millionaire off of Bitcoin. Would you be willing to teach me about crypto? I said, sure. Come over sometime. We can chat about it. About a week later, Michael came to my home. We talked for a couple hours. He was very interested. He found it to be very intriguing as well. 
And at the end of our conversation, Michael said to me, he says, what do you do with crypto? And I said, well, as you know, I'm a big believer, especially in Bitcoin, but I don't invest in crypto. It's too stressful. I trade it. So I, I told him the basics. You know, I buy the dip and it recovers, I flip it. And he said, well, that's what I want to do. And I said, well, I appreciate that you want to do it, but I'm not going to teach you what I do. It took me over 30 years to figure this out, fine tune it. I made a promise to myself a few years, I'm not going to teach somebody what I'm doing. And he said, oh, you can trust me. You know, we've known each other for a while. And I'm like, well, you're a good guy, Michael, but I'm not interested. So as the weeks went on, Michael kept nudging me. Come on, I really want to do what you do. I don't want to invest. I'd rather trade or what you do. So I kept saying no, and then Michael finally came up with an idea. He said, how about I sign a non-disclosure agreement promising not to share the details of your trading system? Would you be comfortable at that point? I said, well, that's, I guess that sounds fair. I do trust the guy. So. 2021, Michael came over to my house. About a week after that, I spent about three to four hours teaching him everything he needed to know, signed the non-disclosure agreement. Two months after Michael came to my house, he retired. Something I didn't realize when Michael was asking me to help him was how this could affect his life, how this could change his life. Michael would send me random text messages and emails during this two-month period simply saying thank you. Thank you for teaching me what you're doing. I'm retired. This has changed my life. This has changed my family's life. And I didn't consider that when he first asked me. But when he would simply say thank you and how it affected his life, it was very heartwarming to me. It, his gratitude, his appreciation uh, really touched this is something, if you've ever helped somebody for free, you don't ask for something, it affects their life, this is priceless. So I've been retired now, you know, since 2015, but it was a real joy to help Michael and to see how it affected his life. So shortly after that, Michael said, I've got a few friends that this could really benefit. Would you be willing to help them? And I said, well, you know, I am retired, so I don't want to start working again, but, you know, I'm open to it as long as they sign the non-disclosure agreement. So Michael has referred four friends to me. They have since referred others to me. And we now have an amazing group of students that I help one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, a lot of them have now retired as well. And this business was never supposed to be a business. This grew organically. I decided to help one friend and it expanded out to other people. That's my story, that's how we got here tonight. So, I'm still retired. But if for any of you that have ever been fully retired, it can be a little boring. You can only play so much golf and mountain bike so much. So, I decided, well, I'll be semi-retired. You know, keep my mind fresh on what's happening. So, that's my story, that's how we got here tonight. So, let me jump back into the presentation. Now, I would like, um, if you could please hold your questions until the end of the presentation. If we took questions during the presentation, we would be here all night, we would never get your food. So now after the presentation, I'm going to be coming around while you're having dinner. I'm going to be giving you my business card, which has my direct number and my direct email address if you want to reach me in the future. Um, if you do have questions, that would be a good time to ask me when I come around later. Now, there's no need to take notes unless you want to. If you love taking notes, feel free to. There's a notepad and pen right there. <clears throat> Most of what we discuss tonight can be found on our website. Our website's right here. It's called digitalassetcoaching.com. So if you want to refresh your course after tonight, feel free to jump on the website. Again, I will give you my business card, which has that website on there also. All right, so let's jump into what I promised all of you before you came tonight. And that is, what are digital assets, what are crypto? I want everyone in here tonight to leave with more knowledge about crypto than before you came in tonight. So let's get into that. First off, what is crypto? The good news is, if you become a student, you don't have to worry about the technical aspects of crypto. That's our job. 
Coach Marvy, Coach Greg, Coach Nicholas, myself, we do the heavy lifting. We do the research. We know which cryptos are the good ones, which ones are the bad ones. And I will tell you right now, I'm going to repeat this over and over, 99% of cryptos are worthless. But 1% are game changers. And we focus on those 1%. Now, again, if, if you become a student, you know, it's our job to do that research. You just relax and enjoy your life. If you become a student, you'll average about 30 minutes a day just managing your trades. Very simple, very easy. I'm going to explain here in a few minutes how that works. Uh, but a good analogy would be that we invented the car. We engineered the car. Your, your job is just to drive the car. So your job is the easy. All right, but I do want to do my best to educate all of you on what crypto is and digital assets. So let's jump into that now. So what is crypto? It's real simple. Crypto is technology. A lot of people make it confusing and complicated. You may have heard different definitions out there. But it's this simple. Crypto is technology. Now what are digital assets? Digital assets is an ownership in any technology. Now, the most popular technology right now is crypto. But there are other types of digital assets, but crypto is the most popular one. So tonight, when I say digital assets or crypto, I mean the same thing. Okay, so I don't want that confusion. I want everyone to take a look at this next slide. Take a minute, look at some of the companies on this slide. This is a small fraction of the companies that invest in crypto and or utilize crypto for their business. There are thousands of companies around the world right now that invest in crypto and or use crypto for their business. There's two companies I want to highlight on here. One is Fidelity, the other one's BlackRock. By show of hands, how many of you have heard of Fidelity or BlackRock? Most of you? Okay. These are two giant asset managers. I'm going to focus on the bigger of the two, and this is BlackRock. For those of you that follow the news, especially the business news, you probably heard about this, but this is some recent news about BlackRock and Fidelity and about six other asset managers. But number one, I want to point out, BlackRock is the largest asset manager in the world. They currently manage over $10 trillion in assets. They recently filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF, and they have over 10,000 salespeople. Now, an ETF, if you've never heard of that, it's an exchange-traded fund. This is a way for you to be able to buy a basket of equities or commodities through your traditional brokerage, like E-Trade, for example. Well, now, you're going to be able to invest in Bitcoin directly through your brokerage account, <coughs> thanks to BlackRock and Fidelity and other companies. But what I want to highlight here is this right here, over 10,000 salespeople. I want you to imagine when this ETF is approved, and BlackRock has a 99.9% .9 success rate of getting their ETFs approved through the SEC. I estimate this to be approved early next year. But when this is approved, every sales rep for BlackRock and Fidelity and the other six companies are going to be on the phone with their clients, and they're going to be recommending Bitcoin. I guarantee you. This is going to happen. This is huge news. This is huge for Bitcoin and the entire crypto industry. Bitcoin is the mothership of cryptos. And when I say the mothership, what I mean by that is when Bitcoin goes up, the other blue chip cryptos fall. And if you that know anything about crypto, you see those patterns. So this is huge news. But let's dive a little deeper into Bitcoin. By a show of hands, how many of you know the maximum supply of Bitcoin? Anybody in here know? Okay, nobody knows. Well, I'm going to tell you. This is the maximum supply of Bitcoin. 21 million. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. Ever. It's written in the code. It can't be changed. Now, this is, again, this is the maximum supply of Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is decentralized. What does that mean? Decentralized means that it's not controlled by any government. And it's not controlled by any company or bank. It is decentralized. Bitcoin is an extremely rare commodity. Bitcoin's not a company, it's a commodity. Now, <clears throat> I have another question. 
by a show of hands, how many of you know to the nearest billion, how many people live in the world? What's the world? Anybody know by which, what's your guess? Billions. Eight, eight billion. He is correct. Eight billion people. Now these eight billion people, I want you to stop for just one second, think about the numbers. I'm a math guy. Eight billion people, only 21 million Bitcoin. Think about that just for a minute. But I want to talk about these eight billion people. They all live in a centralized economy. What is a centralized economy? It's their currency is controlled by their government. It's also devalued by unlimited printing. I talked earlier about my wife, Marvie. You probably heard an accent if you spoke to her. My wife is from Venezuela. If you followed the news or the economy around the world, Venezuela has experienced what they call hyperinflation. We've had some inflation here in America, 5 10%. I know it's been difficult on most of us. In the year 2020, Venezuela experienced 3,000% inflation. My wife would tell me stories. You want to buy something in Venezuela? They take a stack of cash, and they put it on a scale, and they weigh it. You want to buy a hot dog? They don't even count the money. They just weigh it. The currency is worthless in Venezuela. And other countries, Argentina, Turkey, I can go on and on with hyperinflation. But let's bring it home. Let's talk about America. This is called dollar devaluation. Dollars have lost 90% of their purchasing power since 1950, as politicians printed more of them. This is not a train I want to be on. Every year, the money in our pocket goes down in value. A lot of people don't even realize this. It inflates away. Now, this is a train I do want to be on. This is the last 14 years of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin adoption. This is from 2009 to today. This chart shows that over 1 million Bitcoin addresses hold at least one full Bitcoin or more. You can see this consistently goes up every year. Again, this is the train I want to be on. I want to store my wealth here, not in a devalued currency in the fiat system. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into Bitcoin. Bitcoin was invented in the year 2008. It was invented by someone that used the username of Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto is not a real person. Satoshi Nakamoto was the username behind the white paper for Bitcoin. Something that's fun. If you do become a student, I have a theory. I'm 99.9% .9 sure my theory is correct. I know the real person behind Satoshi Nakamoto. I know the person that wrote the white paper and invented Bitcoin. If you become a student, I promise to share with you one-on-one -on -one who this person is. I will give you the facts and the reasons of how I know it's who Satoshi Nakamoto is. So that's something to look forward to if you become a student, remind me of that. Now, Bitcoin in 2009 is when the first block was mined. What is the block? How many of you heard the blockchain? Yeah, a few of you. Okay, blockchain technology, thanks to Bitcoin, is a newer technology. But anyone you talk to that understands technology, mathematics, accounting, the blockchain is amazing technology. Bitcoin is on the blockchain. Now the first block was mined again in 2009, and in 2010 was the first real world transaction for Bitcoin. Does anyone in here know what the first real world transaction for Bitcoin was? Anybody? Okay. Somebody, what did you say? Pizza. Pizza, she is correct. Two pizzas. This was the first real world transaction for Bitcoin. Somebody paid 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas in 2010. Those two pizzas today are worth $250 million. 
back then they were probably worth about $25. But what this slide demonstrates, Bitcoin has been the number one performing asset over the last 13 years. Nothing has come close to it. This was the first transaction. Now a lot of people ask me, you know, Bitcoin, I'm confused. Can you, can you simplify it? I remember when I was in business uh, school back in college, my professor told me, he said, you want to be successful in business? You got to use the KISS philosophy. Give me a KISS. He said, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible. This is the easiest way to think about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is digital gold. Think about gold. Why does somebody buy a bar of gold? They buy it because they hope in 10 years from now it's worth more than it is today. It's a store of value. Bitcoin is the same thing. It's a store of value. Bitcoin is an extremely rare commodity. There's only 21 million. One of the big advantages from Bitcoin and gold is if the price of gold starts going up, they go out and they start digging up more gold. So that supply and demand never kicks in. But with Bitcoin, they can't increase the supply of Bitcoin. Another big advantage with Bitcoin, you want to buy a house with Bitcoin, you can do that now. You want to buy a car with Bitcoin, you can do that now. So that's a lot of utility. But the best way to think about Bitcoin is that it's digital gold. This number is a fun number for me. It has two things going for it. Number one, there are currently over 100 million people that own Bitcoin right now. You might be thinking to yourself, how is that possible? There's only 21 million Bitcoin. How can 100 million people own it? Well, that's the second part of this number. You can own a fraction of a Bitcoin. You don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. They're called Satoshis. This is where this other number comes in. 100 million Satoshis equals one Bitcoin. Satoshi was smart enough to know that one day this was going to go up in value and you need to have a smaller fraction of it. Think of 100 pennies equal, equaling a dollar. It's the same concept. But 100 million Satoshis equals one Bitcoin. So you can buy Satoshis. Let's say you want to buy one dollar worth of Satoshis. What will it get you? This is what one dollar will get you right now. 4,000 sats. What are sats? Satoshis. It's just a, a short version. One of my predictions in 10 years from now is everybody in this room will be buying their groceries at SATS. This will be a household name in about 10 years from now. Another fun fact, this is called Satoshi Island. <laughs> this is real, I'm not a joke. This is an island in the South Pacific, very close to Australia, and it's currently under construction. In less than a year, people will be living on this island, and this is what it's going to look like in about a year from now. 21,000 citizens. Crypto will be the only currency accepted on the island. There will be more of these islands popping up. Right now, there's already countries that have made Bitcoin legal tender. You own Starbucks in El Salvador, for example, you have to accept Bitcoin. You own a McDonald's, you have to accept Bitcoin. This is starting to spread around the world. Now this next slide, this might seem a little mind-boggling to you. And it's $100 trillion. You're probably thinking, where am I going with this? $100 trillion. By a show of hands, how many of you have heard of the baby boomer generation? Most of them. It is estimated the baby boomer generation right now currently owns approximately $100 trillion of assets. My parents fall into the baby boomer generation. Unfortunately, my mom passed away about 10 years ago. Uh, she was 74 years old. My father, still alive, he's doing really well. He's 83 years old right now. And he's a baby boomer. So. Where am I going with this? The point I want to make here is unfortunately we don't live forever. The baby boomer generation is going to be transferring $100 trillion to the younger generations over the next 10 years. <clears throat> this is what I think the next 10 years are going to look like. 
the baby boomers will be transferring their wealth to Gen X, where I fall in, millennials, like my son, and Gen Z. Got any grandkids or kids that might fall in that category? Uh, Generation X, that's where I'm at. I'm very comfortable with technology. In high school, I took a computer class. Taught me how to write code. I remember getting my first PC in high school. It was an IBM personal computer, and I had this fancy dot matrix printer that went way. I thought it was so high tech and so cool. When cell phones came out, I got one of the first cell phones. When the internet started evolving, I got onto the internet. I'm very comfortable with technology. My father, he's not very comfortable with technology. If I want to see my dad now, we either have to talk on the phone or see each other face to face. He wants nothing to do with email and texting. This is the baby boomer generation. Now, of course, you get into millennials and Gen, especially Gen Z. They probably came out of the womb with little cell phones ready to go. The younger generations are comfortable with technology. They're comfortable in this digital world. Baby boomers aren't. But you have to think about the future. Do you want to invest? your wealth into what's going to be happening in the future or what happened in the past. So I made a decision, partly based on this, is that I want to be part of the future. I want my, my wealth to grow, my investment to grow. So back to this number here, $100 trillion transferred. Let's be conservative and say only 10% of that $100 trillion goes into digital assets with these younger generations who are super comfortable with Bitcoin and crypto and NFTs and all these things. Let's say only 10%, that's $10 trillion. Right now, the entire market cap of crypto is $1 trillion. This is a 10x over the next 10 years. This is what I think is the reality of the future. Now, let's change gears. Uh, what are all points? Very simple, altcoins is anything that's not Bitcoin. There are over 20,000 altcoins right now. I know I said it earlier, but I'm going to repeat it over and over. 99% of cryptos are worthless. But again, 1% are game changers. Let's talk about a couple of those game changers. First one is called a stable coin. How many of you have ever heard of stable coins? Okay, beautiful. Stable coin, this is an altcoin. Easiest way to describe a stable coin is that it's a digital dollar. Stable coins are tied to the US dollar one for one. They're pegged to the US dollar. They never change in value. There's no volatility. Okay. Now, there's two stable coins on here I want to talk about. This first one is called PayPal. How many of you heard of PayPal? Most of you. Okay. PayPal recently came out with their own stable coin. It's called PYUSD. PayPal has over 400 million customers worldwide. They now are able to buy a stablecoin that runs on top of the Ethereum network, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. And they can transfer money anywhere around the world to friends and family. It's tied to the dollar because it's not changing value. Now, this other stablecoin right here is called USDC. This one's been out for a long time. This is the one I use most often. I send payments in USDC. I receive payments in USDC all through the blockchain. It stays dollar for dollar. These are called stable coins. Next is the biggest altcoin of them all. It's called Ethereum. There's nothing that comes close to Ethereum in regards to the size, but let's talk about Ethereum. The easiest way to think about Ethereum is its digital oil. What does oil do? Oil makes things work. Everything we do in life, we unfortunately we need oil to make it work. Well, net, Ethereum is a network that's similar to oil, but to make things simple, I want all of you to think about the United States. I want you to think about the inter interstate highway system around the United States. Our hardworking men and women built this highway system around the United States so we can travel state to state without stop signs, without stop lights, to visit friends and family. And this was built in America. It's a, it's a network of highways. 
But what happened when those highways were built? Businesses started popping up on those highways. We've all seen restaurants and hotels and billboards. This is what's happening with Ethereum. Ethereum is a computer network that you're able to, as a business owner, build on top of. Now what, now what do you build up, what do you build with? They're called dApps. They're decentralized applications. So the same thing as the apps on your phone right now, except they're called dApps. They're decentralized. And they run on top of the Ethereum network. Now some of the more popular dApps right now, uh, gaming, shopping, music, uh, I was a big gamer when I was a kid. I had my Atari and Nintendo, and I don't play video games very much anymore. But you know, if we have kids or grandkids, they love to play their games. Uh, shopping, we all shop. Shopping's getting very big on top of Ethereum. And then music, a lot of us love music, becoming very popular. Now this question, or this next slide, is a question I get asked all the time. So I'm gonna address it right now. People always ask, well, how do you use crypto? How does it benefit my life? How does it benefit the world? What are the use cases for crypto? There are dozens of use cases, but I'm going to highlight some right here. These are eight popular use cases right now for crypto. Number one, it improves settlement times. Instant, no more pending. I bank with Wells Fargo. I have a few credit cards with Capital One. How many of you have ever gone online to check your statement and saw a little category that said pending transactions? How many of you have seen pending transactions? Well, if you don't know what pending transaction means, it means it hasn't settled. <coughs> Our legacy financial system is very outdated. Sometimes you have to wait one, two, or three days for those pending transactions to actually settle. With crypto, there's no more pending transactions. Everything is instant. Now next, it's cheaper to send money overseas. No more Western Union. I have lived in other countries. I currently have friends and family that live in other countries. I have sent money overseas to friends and family and only use Western Union or MoneyGram. But if you've ever sent money to a friend or family member in another country, Western Union, for example, they will always gouge you with fees. I don't use Western Union anymore. What I use is that stable coin I talked about earlier, USDC. Doing this, I'm not gouged with fees anymore. I can send $1,000 to a friend for less than a penny, thanks to crypto. Next, it's a new way for artists to be paid, NFTs. If you're a musician or an artist, you now can protect your artwork you can now share your artwork and sell your artwork in small fractions to your fans. You can copyright your music. You can trademark your music all through the blockchain. Next, updating our financial system 24-7. Crypto doesn't sleep. It operates 24-7. I'm sure a lot of us here are used to the legacy financial system, the business hours of Monday through Friday, maybe a little bit on Saturday. Well, again, that's a very old-fashioned legacy financial system. Crypto is 24-7. Next, title ownership, homes and vehicles. Local governments all over the United States are now moving to the blockchain. You want to record your title of your home, it goes on the blockchain now, your automobile going to the blockchain. This is spreading around the country and around the world. Next, I wrote licensing, uh, fishing. You want to go to Wyoming and do some fishing? You can buy some crypto, get your fishing, fishing license through the blockchain. Again, this is spreading around the country. Uh, merchant fees decreasing, less than a penny. How many, of you, it, how many of you in here have ever owned a business? Any business owners? Okay, a few of you. You're going to understand this a lot. I mentioned back in 1987, I decided to pivot went to the entrepreneurial life. So I've been a business owner for over 30 years. Uh, the business I own most of my adult life is a pet supply company. And this pet supply company accepts credit cards, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, American Express. Whenever we sell pet supplies, 
we have to pay a fee to MasterCard and Visa. Let's say it's a $1,000 transaction. I'm paying $20 to $30 for that transaction for the privilege of accepting MasterCard and Visa. Well, that's changed for my business and a lot of other businesses. You now can accept stable points. The stable point I talked to earlier, let's peg one for one. Most of my transactions nowadays are with USDC, that stable point. If I receive money, I receive it in that, I send it. I can now sell $1,000 worth of pet supplies and pay one penny for that transaction, not 20 or $30. Imagine that the millions of businesses around the world, this is starting to happen. If you follow the news, Visa and MasterCard are now starting to see this, and Visa just partnered with USDC through one of the blockchains to now start to be able to offer this to everybody. So this is some exciting news. And then last, probably my favorite use case, reshaping the internet, Web3. I want you to think about the internet. Think about the early days of the internet. All you could do in the early days was read. There were static images, and all you could do was read. Now the internet evolved, what they call Web2. Web 2 is the world we live in right now. Web 2 is where you can read and write. It opened up the door for blogging, for social media. Now, the thing I don't like about Web 2, and you probably don't like it either, unless you don't realize this, a lot of people think Google's free, and Facebook's free, and Instagram, and all these social, they think they're free. Well, if you don't know this, you are the product. I'm the problem. I have spent millions of dollars with Google and Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter. Before I retired, I was spending all this money on advertising my pet supply business. I'll give you an example. I'm on the phone with my Facebook rep, and she says, well, who's your target audience? I said, well, the ideal person would be someone that just got a new puppy. And she said, OK, well, here's a post from Susie. She's writing on her Facebook page that she's getting a new puppy next month. Would she be an ideal person to target? I said, yeah, it's perfect. And she says, okay, well, we're going to send your ad out to any, everyone that seems and has a similar profile as Susie, and you're going to pay us $1 every time they click on your ad. I said, well, that sounds fair. Okay, sign me up. Let's do it. So they send my ad out. I pay Facebook a dollar every time somebody clicks on my app. Web3 changes this completely. Web3 is under construction as we speak. It'll be the internet we're all part of in the future. Web3, you will now own your own data. For example, just got a new puppy, and you see my ad, I'm going to pay you a dollar to click on my ad, not Facebook. So this is a summary of the future of the internet. Web 1, all we can do is read. Web 2, read and write. Web 3, which is happening as we speak, read, write, and own. You will finally be able to take back your identity and your data, and you'll be compensated for this. And there's dozens of other benefits to Web 3, but we'd be here all night if I got into those. So, all right, so let's change gears again. Why do most investors fail? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but I'm going to touch on some of the, the main reasons right now. First of all, when it comes to crypto, like I said, 99% of cryptos are worthless. You should only buy the blue chip cryptos, which are the best of the best. We know which ones those are. But these are four reasons a lot of investors have failed in the stock market, crypto, so this applies to most investors. Number one is greed chasing 10 x returns. You don't want to be greedy, because when you're greedy and you're chasing a 10 x return, you normally end up losing all your money. Now, five or six years ago, 10 x did happen quite a bit in crypto. It was very young at, at the time. Crypto's now matured, so these are very rare to get these. But you don't want to be greedy, because you end up losing all your money. You might as well play the lottery or go to Vegas if that's your mentality. Number two is social media, pump and dump schemes. Please be careful with social media. I'm not saying all of social media is bad. There's good actors and there's bad actors, like anything in life. 
But social media, it's very common for a social media influencer or even a celebrity to pop up a crypto. The reason they're popping it up is they own a lot of that crypto. They pop it up, the retail investors come in and buy that crypto and they dump it on all these retail investors. It's called a pump and dump scheme. Please be careful with social media. You don't want to rely on that to figure out which cryptos to buy. Next is acting on emotions. Panic buying and selling. I talked earlier about my father back in 1987. He panic sold all of his stocks. If my father just would have done nothing, he would have made millions of dollars on these stocks. He said he panic sold. He let his emotions get the best of him. And he's never been in the stock market since. It was a very traumatizing experience for him. Panic buying. How many of you heard of FOMO? Okay. FOMO means the fear of missing out. This is another common mistake people make when it comes to investing. They see a stock or a crypto going up and up and up, and I'm like, well, I've got to jump on. And they get in, and then it dumps. It tanks. You don't want to buy at the top. So don't panic buy. And last, they have no plan. They're just waiting. They take $100,000, they buy some crypto, and they cross their fingers, and they just hope it goes up in value. That's a bad strategy. You want to have a plan. Our students never buy something without already knowing how much they're going to sell it for. We have a plan. So we do the opposite of everything on here. We're never greedy. If we make 50% a year, we're happy with that. Right. Some people, they want to make 10x. Yeah, and that seems like a lot too. That's conservative for crypto. Social media, pump and dump schemes, we don't rely on social media. I have been in crypto over 10 years. I know which projects are legitimate, have some future potential. Our other coaches, we follow uh, these projects but we only buy the best blue chip ones. We don't watch social media and we get caught up in that. Acting on emotions, panic buying and selling. I like to save my emotions for my friends and family. I don't like to bring emotions into business. I like to use very rational, mathematical, logical reasoning when I buy or sell something. So we never act on emotions. And lastly, we do have a plan. It took me over 30 years to figure out this plan. I make money on every trade. Hard to believe, but thanks to crypto, if you become a student, you'll understand what that plan is. Now, what is our specialty? Our specialty is making money with digital assets in a smart, safe, easy, and consistent way. And when I say easy, don't laugh at this next slide. But it is this easy. A fifth grader could do it. Most of our students had no previous experience with crypto. In fact, a lot of our students have never bought stock before. I like to keep things simple. So if you do become a student, I promise you this is something that's very easy to learn. I do it because it is so easy and it's not stressful, it's not complicated. But let's go a little further with this. We take a one-on-one -on -one approach, all of our students. We will be with you during your entire crypto journey. Whether you're with us for five years or 50 years, we will be with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you notice we're a small company, we plan on staying small. The amount of students we have, we plan on keeping it small. This will be a small, exclusive group. Now, I get this question a lot. Well, who controls my digital assets? And the answer is you. We never take any possession of your crypto. We have no control over it. You always control your own crypto. Now I wrote here, Coinbase. Myself and most of my students use Coinbase. Coinbase, again, it's the largest, most reputable crypto exchange in the United States. It's publicly traded. Companies like BlackRock and Fidelity, I can go on, they use Coinbase to custody their crypto. It's about as safe as you can get working with crypto with Coinbase. 
Now, you're probably all thinking, how do we benefit? What do we get out of this? Well, we benefit in two ways. Number one, I've been retired since 2015, but I decided to come out of retirement and work part-time because this has been a labor of love for me. I love technology. I love having a sneak peek into the future. You might consider me a futurist. Crypto is very interesting to me. It's very fascinating. I know for a lot of people, it takes some time to go down that rabbit hole and get familiar with it. And we make it very easy for you to get comfortable with this. But the point I try to make with the first benefit is if you become a student and you text me or email me in a couple weeks from now and you just say thank you for the time that you put in for what you've taught me, how it's affecting your life, that's going to make my day. It's very heartwarming to receive that gratitude. So I do this because I enjoy it. Now the other benefit, right here. You make $10,000 in profits before we receive any coaching fees. Now obviously this is going to benefit you first before it benefits us. I do not think it's ethical that I accept one penny from anybody that's a student until you're successful and you've made at least $10,000 profit. I don't need the money. I'm retired. But if I spend a lot of hours with you and you've made $10,000, which you will make $10,000, I know you will, because this is proven. and I've done it for 30 years. I know you will make $10,000. Once you make $10,000, it's 5%. But you're going to make that money first. Everything I do is free in the beginning. Once you make $10,000, it's 5%. If you continue as a student, which I'm sure you will, it's 5% or whatever your profits are that month. So do the math for those of you that don't quit with math. It's $500. It's 5%. Of 10,000. So this is the second way we benefit. But I don't want any money up front. Tonight is free. The dinner's free. Next time I see you is free. The time after that's free. But down the road, out of respect, you will share some small percentages with us. Now, most of our students, you don't have to fall into one of these categories, but these are our current students right now. Most of them are business owners, doctors, real estate agents, athletes, retirees. Again, you don't have to fall into one of these categories, but these are generally people that have had some time to accumulate some wealth, and they want to do something safe, but they also want to do something that yields more than 5 or 10% a year. So, again, these are most of our students. Now, our philosophy in the business world, how many of you have ever heard of this acronym? SWAN, anybody here? Yes. What does what SWAN mean? She's down for a second. Sleep. 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 Without. Uh, well, he knows right here. Why don't you say it? I can't remember the A. Oh, really? Well, that's the easy one. All right. Well, let's let's move past the Sorry, right now. Well, they were correct. Sleep well at night. Yes. Sleep well at night. This is our philosophy. What do I mean by this? If you become a student, I can assure you that you will sleep well at night. What we do is completely different than traditional investors where they, they put all their money in and they just hope the market goes up. Well, to me, that's very stressful because if the market goes down, you start to lose your initial investment, that capital, your portfolio balance starts to go down. I don't like that feeling. So we sleep well at night, and the reason we sleep well at night is we're happy when the market goes down. We're happy when it goes up, and we're happy to go sideways. Now I'm going to explain right now why we're always happy every day when we wake up happy. And I want to emphasize to all of you that a low-stress lifestyle is very healthy. I love my mother very much, but the main reason my mother passed away so early is because of stress. My mother lived a very high-stress lifestyle. And it ended her life sooner than it should have. So I learned from that. I wanted to think low stress. So this will be very low stress, but let's get into why it's low stress. This is an example of our system. Try your best to follow along with me here. This is an example of 21 days. 
Now, we'll go to day one. If you look right here, it says start. Now, let's imagine you take $100,000 on day one, and you put it on Coinbase, and it's sitting there. What most people do is they take that $100,000, and they buy a bunch of cryptos, and they hope it goes up. We do the opposite. We don't buy anything. We put the money on Coinbase, and we wait. What do we wait for? Well, in this example, we wait for day two. There's a dip in the market. So we're going to buy some of those blue chip cryptos, not $100,000 worth, but a small part of our portfolio balance. We buy that dip. Well, if you notice here on day three, it dipped again. So we're going to buy more, but we're going to go a little heavier. Now, day four, kind of a flat day. We do nothing on that day. Now, day five, there's a little spike. So we're going to sell what we bought here on day three. Day six dips again, so we're going to buy again. Day seven, there's a spike. We're going to sell what we bought here. We're going to sell what we bought there. Another dip, we buy. This day's kind of flat. We do nothing. Spike, we sell. Buy, get by the dips. Nothing. And it goes on and on and on. Wash, rinse, repeat. Now imagine you put $100,000 in on day one. Well, over here, you're down about 5%. But with this example, you're going to be up here around 10%. The reason is every time you sell, that's profit, 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 profit. We're just chipping away at the profits. We're not being greedy. We're chipping away. Coach Greg over here, when I first taught him my system, that's what he said. He said, well, I get it now. We're just chipping away. Each day we're making profits. So that's a good, good analogy. Another one of my students, his name's Jason. He's one of my bigger students. He has millions of dollars in this. This is what he said after I trained him. He's a big baseball fan. He says, we're not trying to hit home runs. We're just going, we're just going for base hits. That's a great analogy. When you think about trying to hit a home run, you're putting all your power into that swing. You might be a little wild. A lot of times you strike out. But when you take a slow, methodical approach, it's much easier to get a base hit. So we're getting base hits. Now something I always forget to talk about when I talk about this with people is right here, fun. Might be hard to understand, but actually, if you become a student, this is fun. Every day you wake up, you're going to be excited to see what happened in your Coinbase account. I love it because I don't I, I don't I won't get too excited here, but every day you wake up, you're either gonna buy something or sell something. And they usually bought or sold while you're sleeping. How many of you heard of a limit order? Most of you? Okay. A limit order is when you place an order on Coinbase, for example, that says, I'm willing to buy, let's say the crypto is at a thousand dollars right now, you say, I'm willing to buy it at nine hundred. So you put in an order for $900 for that crypto. You go to sleep at night, three in the morning, because crypto doesn't sleep, it comes down to $900, it triggers your limit order in Coinbase. You've now bought that crypto. You wake up in the morning, and you have something on your phone that says, you just purchased this crypto for $900. So when you wake up, it might be a 950, it might be at 1,000. So you're either going to sell it right away because it's already rebounded, or you're going to put a limit sell order in place that. So every day you wake up, except for the flat days, of course, you're going to buy or sell something. And a lot of times it happens while you're sleeping. You do not have to keep up with this throughout the day. This is not something you monitor all the time. Enjoy your life. Don't, your life is not going to change. If you get an email from Coinbase, Sometime in that day, sit down and put either the buy order in or the sell order. It's very simple. And I teach everyone how it works. And it's, again, very easy. But it's actually fun. It's a fun way to invest in the ball. So keep that in mind, too. So not only is it low stress, but it's fun. Now, top 10. Again, we only trade the top 10 best blue chip cryptos. We stay away from those mean cryptos and other types of cryptos. We only trade the top 10. 
because we want cryptos that are going to recover when they dip. So these are solid projects that have been out for years and years and we've done it for homework on. Now if you become a student, this is what you can expect when it comes to the firms. You can expect steady gains each year. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a get rich slowly. But let me explain. These are real numbers, by the way. This is not a made up chart. These are real numbers. You can go double check it with the charts when you get home. This is from the year 2016 to right now. We're going to compare the S&P 500 to Bitcoin to digital asset coaching, which is what we do. Now, the S&P 500, it's this red line right here. As you can see, it's had some up years, had some down years. But overall, nice little profit. You've been in the S&P 500 the last seven years. Now, let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is this yellow line. I'm going to do my best to stay on with this pointer. You can see some amazing or crazy of all you want to look at it. But it's like Six Flags Magic Mountain. That's not a roller coaster ride I want to do. I love Bitcoin. I believe in Bitcoin, but it's stressful. You don't know when to buy, you don't know when to sell. This is what we do. It's the blue line right here. Again, we're not greedy. So we start off, we're outperforming the SP 500. And each year, especially as you're reinvesting those profits, it starts to grow consistently. I could outperform Bitcoin. This is what you can expect as a student. Now, we're near the end here. I know you're getting hungry. So you might be thinking, okay, what are the steps to become a student? Like I said, everything's free. But uh, these are the steps to become a student. Tonight, you're going to enjoy your dinner. While you're having your dinner, I'm going to come around. I'm going to give each one of you my business card. It has my direct phone number, my direct email address. You can reach out to me anytime. Any questions? If you do have questions tonight, feel free to ask them while I come around. I will answer any question you have. Uh, now, I will be reaching out to all of you after tonight. I might send you an email, and all I'm going to ask from you is if you would simply provide some feedback about tonight's presentation. There's no obligation. Tell me what you liked, what was interesting, any suggestions you might have. I'm very open-minded. Uh, so please let me know some feedback. Now, uh, if I do email you, if you're interested in becoming a student, I will be happy to talk to you more about that. And what we would do is we would schedule a free consultation. Only about a 30 minute Q&A. You can do it over the phone. You can do it face to face if you prefer. About a 30 minute free consultation. If you're comfortable with me and I'm comfortable with you, then we can make a decision to work together, and then the final step is training. Training, I will do it personally. I will work with each one of you. Um, I do have a lot of husband wives that work together, um, so I can train both of you at the same time, only you just have one Coinbase account. Um, so if you have a spouse or a friend or a partner or a son, daughter, we can do it together. But generally, I, I train you know, one person on same time if we're related. Um, after the training, you will be making money right away. Immediately. You will be in the game. Now, most students have no questions after the first week. The reality is you're going to email me, you might text me a couple questions, we might jump on a five or ten minute phone call to clarify a few things. But every student I have ever had has no questions after the first month. No. I'd say about 80% have no questions after the first week, 100% within the first month. This is very simple to do. Okay? And I will make sure the questions are always answered. Uh, again, every day is the same day for me because I'm retired, so I work whenever I feel like working. So if it's a weekend, you can text me in the morning. Okay, so those are the steps. Um, now we are at the very end. And it's now time for dinner and your free Bitcoin commemorative coin. I appreciate all of you taking time out of your night to be with us tonight. Um, 
I know that this is a lot to absorb. Hopefully I kept it simple for you. Again, I'm going to be coming around as you're having dinner, giving you my business card. If you have any questions while I come around, please feel free to ask me at that time. If you prefer to save your questions for that free consultation, you can save it for that time. So that's up to you. So we're going to get that started. And once again, I want to thank everybody for coming.